Greetings all. Tonight we're going after a reflection nebula near the constellation of Orion. We're going to try to get M78. I'm going to call it M78 in the video, but there's a lot going on in this picture if I frame it properly. Uh, M78, also known as NGC 2068, but also nearby are three other reflection nebula, the NGC 2064, NGC 2067, and NGC 2071. Anyhow, those are all the objects that if I frame this up, we're going to see in there, running all through there, these lanes of thick, dark dust that we'll see. And then finally, the uh, McNeil Nebula, if I could get it framed up properly. Now, I have to tell you that I did not originally intend to make a video on this object. I was, I was just going to do it for fun, not make a video out of it. However, I got to tell you, I have been out nine nights on this object. Tonight will be my tenth night on this object. And throughout all nine nights, I only have an hour and a half of images so far. So because this thing has turned into such a hard time, maybe a prudent individual would give up on it and move on to something else. But I'm not always prudent. And this has become a quest to me. I am going to get this nebula, no matter how long it takes me. And because of all these problems and the determination is why I decided to go ahead and turn this into a video, because the bulk of it is still ahead of me. I've only got an hour and a half. I want to get maybe eight, nine, even ten hours on this object. Now, here's what's been happening to me. About every time I move on to this object and get going really good, I get a picture, maybe two, that are actually pretty good, and then the clouds roll in. Every time. And I want to know a couple things. How is it that that nebula knows when I point my telescope at it? And if it does know when I point my telescope at it, what is the physical mechanism that it uses to put clouds between itself and my scope. I, I'm trying to find the answer to those things. Uh, it's just caused me a lot of problems. There's something else out there too. That part of the sky does not work the way the rest of the sky works. And what I mean by that is when I'm doing my plate solving images and uh, getting the stuff all ready before I move on to the nebula, the whole sky is dark, uh, beautiful, bright stars, not cloudy at all. It, it's really excellent uh, seeing conditions. But then the instant I move over onto M78, it's it's all kind of cloudy. Uh, I can't find any clear uh, guide stars. I know there's some there that are bright enough, but there's just something about that part of the sky that's different than the rest of it. And I'm starting to wonder: Is it all of that those dark dust lanes that are scattered throughout there? It's making it a lot more difficult to film this image. All right, <clears throat> everything's hooked up. The camera just finished cooling. Uh, it just got dark, so we're kind of ready to go here. Right now we're pointed up at the North Celestial Pole. So what I'm gonna do, if I'm not focused good, my plate solve is not gonna work. So I'm gonna take a picture just where the telescope is pointed at right now just to get an initial read on the focus. I've got my luminance filter. I've got a five second exposure. Exposure started. So we're gonna see what the focus looks like before we fold exposure with it. Exposure finished. finished. Yeah, see that's that's no good. I, I could I could if it even if I tried to go to Beetlejuice it wouldn't work. So I got I gotta do some work on that focus before I can do a go to. So we're we're just gonna try and work on it right here. Oh, 
All right, that might not be completely focused, but I think it's good enough to get a plate off. So uh, I'm gonna get off the live view. We're gonna head on over to Beetlejuice and then we'll uh, do our fine tune focus there. I'm gonna keep it on one second, see if we can get our plate off with one second. Off it goes towards Beetlejuice, just like we told it to do. Know in a second here if plate solving is going to work. Ought to. Exposure started. Exposure finished. Oh, it did work. <clears throat> See, the first try it got within 6,050. You can't even see build juice on here. Exposure so it made a quick adjustment. Exposure finished. There we go. All right, so now we'll go over to live view. One second. I'll put the bat knob mask on and we'll fine tune this focus. It's pretty close right there. Pretty close. Let's see what the bat knob aid thinks. Yeah. Bounce around a little bit. See if it'll stabilize on out. All right, the mount is focused. We'll uh, do a plate solve and uh, synchronize. Exposure started. Exposure finished. Image solved. Right. Synchronize. Now the mount knows where it's at. Let's go take a look in Stellarium. Yeah, and there it is, right on Beetlejuice, just like it ought to be. So you see now it's a pretty short hop from Beetlejuice right on down to M78 here. So we'll use a go-to function to make that happen. I've been using the generic M78. It's, no, I didn't. I used the, the one I built, the custom one. It puts it right in between the eyeballs. You'll see what I'm talking about. Exposure started. Exposure finished. Yeah, see those two eyeballs right there? It's going to make an adjustment and get right in between those two eyes right there. Exposure started. Exposure finished. Now you see how that is is gray here. Uh, the rest of the sky wasn't gray; it was black. Uh, now it it did plate solve with one second exposure, so that's a good sign. And it, ha it hasn't been doing that, but uh, but I'll take that. So we'll get some guiding Deep going. Sky Deep event. sky clock event. Hopefully we can find a good guide star. There's one. It's the signal noise ratio, 20, it's marginal, but it'll do, it'll have to do. I was gonna calibrate. While it's calibrating, I'm gonna go up and fix the imaging plan. I got some luminance the other night, so I'm gonna bump this down to, I think, 25. We'll start with that. So 25 luminance, 20 red, 20 green, 20 blue, and uh, we'll let it run after that. Calibration's done, guiding is going. So let's get the imaging plan going. 
Notice I'm taking five minute exposures. Now, if things work the way they have been working, I'll probably get one or two good images just to tease me and then the clouds will roll in. So we'll see, if, see how it goes tonight. Okay, this is a luminance image, five minute luminance in its image that just came in. Now, uh, that's not too bad, I guess. But it's, it's kind of milky, a, a little bit light. Now, let me show you one that I got the other night. Uh, I'm going to call up this one I took the other night. We see that this one's dark. Uh, you can see a lot more stars. You can see a lot more detail of the nebula along here. And I was hoping to get more of these, uh, more of this quality, the, these ones that are dark where you can see all this detail. Uh, you, you can see over here on the right, uh, I got a bunch of milky ones too, but I did get a few dark ones. Uh, tonight, uh, first one that came in. So just watch when I call up the first one tonight to see the difference. There it is. Of course, it's on the other side of the meridian, but that's okay. And now, I think the reason this one is so light is the moon is uh, still up. You, you see here the moon, moon illumination that, that we have. It's probably 35 degrees above the horizon right now, so it'll be with me for another, another couple of hours and then I'll lose that moonlight. So I think when I lose that moonlight, a lot of this fuzzy or, or this uh, light stuff will go away and I'll get those dark pictures again. Uh, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. Uh, anyhow, another, another luminance coming in here in 15 seconds. Let's watch it come in. All right, I fast forwarded time, two more seconds. Exposure finished. Dithering started. started. Yeah, it looks pretty much like the first one, so I think they're all going to be kind of uh, milky like this until the until the moon goes down, and then we should start seeing some darker images. So that's what we'll plan on, and uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated through the night as uh, this goes finished. on. Exposure, Exposure started. started. What I do want to do though is I'll go ahead and plate solve this image, and then then we'll take a look in Stellarium and see see how it's framed up. Image soft. All right, show. Now let's take a look. So yeah, see there, there it is. That's how we're framed up right there, just like we want to be. And if, if you zoom in here, you can see the, those are the two eyeballs that I got in between on the uh, the initial framing. Uh, but dithering and stuff has moved to the center a little bit, uh, so it's seems to be back over here but I'm skeptical about that let's go take a look yeah I just, something happened here I'm not sure what happened but that's not uh, that's not the frame and I want so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and uh, reframe again Exposure canceled. Exposure canceled. This time I'm going to remember to stop guiding. See, the guiding is awful. And it always is. It always is on this target. I don't know why. So we solve this again. Image solved. Image solved. Exposure canceled. Those eyeballs that I want to get in between are right across that little dark ridge actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a one second exposure here exposure started because I can see exposure the eyeballs finished. on the one second exposure there they are right there so we'll solve this one image solved and then I'll use the aim function and then just aim right there in between the eyeballs right there Exposure started. 
I think uh, what Exposure I did is finished. Finished. after it moved Go over, plus plus I, finished. I, I never did frame it up, but uh, we're framed up now. So let's let's take a peek. Yeah, see, there we are, right in between those eyeballs. That's the way I wanted to be, and that's the way I was on all my images the other night. So we'll get guiding going again. I don't have to recalibrate because I'm I'm in the same part of the sky. The calibration should still be good. We'll get the imaging plan going. Exposure started. Exposure started. Right, now we're back on track. I think I could still use these images even though they were uh, off-centered from the from the rest of them a little bit. And the reason is when I stack them, I will get a little bit of artifact around the edge from being displaced, but it's only two, and it's going to be two out of maybe 50 or 60, so I don't think it'll be uh, noticeable, really. So I still think I'll be able to use these two images. This is after something. That's, uh, that's Willie. He gets upset when Willie comes around. Y'all are going to think I was just being dramatic about all that weather and stuff. So far, so good. But if things, uh, things run like they normally do, clouds ought to be coming in any time. So far, it's staying... So far, they're staying away. If you look uh, look here on the astrophotography uh, deep sky darkness calculator, and you'll see that the we're working with a 33% moon illumination. Yeah, that's not too bad. But, uh, as you can see, it's it's on the way out. So the moon's going to set it. it. Says here at 11:18, and then I'll think think I'll have a, a good five hours of complete darkness after the moon sets. So if the clouds stay away like they're doing so far, we might be okay. Also uh, clear outside, I looked at the temperature dew point and the closest the temperature gets to the dew point is three degrees. That's uh, right around one or two o'clock. So I think that's maybe the only danger I have of my lens dewing up. But I have four dew heaters on there. They're running full steam. That doesn't always do it for me, but I, I hope it does. A few nights ago, I lost about two hours of imaging because I wasn't paying attention, and my telescope lens dewed up, and I, I didn't notice it. But anyhow, that's what happens when you don't pay attention to detail. One other thing I'll mention to you, see here I've got a meridian flip coming up in 139 minutes. So to, to me and you, that's 10, 20 p.m. At that time, I'll definitely do, do another focus uh, af after the meridian flip. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep an eye on some of these medium-sized stars here, like this one, that one over here. And if those stars uh, start to bloat and start to fatten up, I'll know that my focus is going and I'll have to do something about it before the meridian flip. So that's just another thing to uh, keep an eye on. We've got about 27 luminance and about five red. So we'll, after the meridian flip, we'll pick up with red. Let me just scroll back to the top here. So you see the, f the first ones were kind of milky, a little bit cloudy, like we talked about, uh, which I think is because of the moonlight, uh, moonlight pollution. But then watch as we scroll down through there and you see that they're, they get darker as the night wears on. And then about this one right here is about where the moon went uh, below the trees to the scope. So no more moonlight pollution from here on out. The images di did get darker when the moon went down like, uh, like we thought they were going to. So that's a bit of good news. Everything is still uh, going according to plan. Radiant flip here in about uh, three minutes. Then we'll get going on the other side. Uh, like I mentioned before, after the meridian flip, I will go ahead and uh, do a refocus on Beetlejuice to, uh, just to tighten that focus up. Okay, the meridian flip's done. Now this is where it's pointing after the meridian flip. Uh, I don't see the two eyeballs there, so we know it's not on the target, but 
let's do a plate solve and figure out exactly where it's at. Image solved. Image solved. All right, let's sync them out and do a show. Okay, that's where it went. It, it tried to go back over to here, but you see how far off it was after the meridian flip. But that's okay, because now the mount knows where it's at. But we're not going right here just yet. We're gonna, remember we're gonna go over here to Beetlejuice, tighten up our focus again, and then we'll come back to the target. Let's get that going. Down here in the go to plus plus window, we'll go to stars, call it Beetlejuice. And since we just synced the mount pretty close to Beetlejuice, I bet it's gonna get really close to it the first try. We'll see. Doesn't have that far to go. Uh, you know what it did, doggone it. All right, look at it going back over. Uh, it's going back over to the other side of the meridian where it came from. It's gonna go get on, it's went the long way around to get on Beetlejuice. So that was kind of, kind of dumb on my part. Let me show you why it did that. So the meridian runs, runs through like this. So you see that our target is just past the meridian but Beetlejuice still did not pass the meridian. It was still on the other side of the meridian. So I should have went down here and used this star, Regal. Some people call it Rigel. Maybe it's Rigel, maybe it's Regal, I don't know. To me it's Regal. But had I, had I used Regal as a focus star, it just would have did a quick jump right over here. But since Beetlejuice was on the other side of the meridian, it went and took the long way around, all the way back to the other side. But that's okay. Uh, we'll, f we'll focus on Beetlejuice, get that done, and then we'll go back the long way around to get back on M78. Uh, while I was doing the Meridian Flip, putting the Batnov mask on, I did check for dew on the lens, and the lens is still clear of dew. So the uh, dew heaters, uh, so far, they're keeping up uh, with the job. Just have to keep my eye on that as the night wears on. I don't want to lose any more images because I got dew on the lens and didn't know.